स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडे लेक्चर इन टूडे लेक्चर विल नॉट डिस्कस एनी न्यू क्वांटम मैकेनिकल सिस्टम और इट्स सोल्यूशन rather what we would do is that we would introduce a new notation that is extremely useful in formulating quantum mechanical problems in fact using this new notation we could re discuss all the previous problems that we had or we have discussed over the uh, past uh, several videos and then we can see how advantageous the new notation is the notation that uh we are going to discuss is popularly known as dirac's bracket notation before discussing about this particular notation let us see how this comes into play suppose we have a vector in the three dimensional space in the familiar cartesian coordinate we are uh, used to suppose we say that okay there is this vector a which is given by a1 a2 a3 at the three coordinates so the way we write this vector as a is we define some unit vector along x axis y axis or z axis so instead of keeping it specific to cartesian i'm trying to keep it very general so therefore i define one unit vector e1 uh, along which my uh, amplitude is a1 similarly i have e2 the unit vector so here e1 e2 e3 are the three unit vectors if you are discussing for a three dimensional space in other words i can write this i goes from 1 to 3 ei ai so these eis they are called the basis vector or unit vector these basis vectors form a complete basis what do i mean by complete basis that means using this ei is that is e1 e2 e3 i can define any other vector in this three dimensional space so i just need e1 e2 and e3 and then i can express any vector so that's why i call this ei is as forming a complete set of basis vectors now this is about the cartesian coordinate or or you can take that to spherical polar coordinates but when i translate this to quantum mechanical system i have another problem the problem is that in quantum mechanical system i do not necessarily discuss about this uh, three dimensional uh, vector rather what i need is that as if you remember most of the quantum mechanical problems that we have solved the results the eigen functions turned out to be a complete series of eigen functions so there are many many number of eigen functions that come out of this solution of any quantum mechanical problem because we see uh, that the hamiltonian uh, is a hermitian operator and when i solve this hermitian operator i get a complete set of eigen functions now the state of the system can be described as either one of these eigen functions or a linear combination of this eigen functions because these eigen functions are a complete set so any arbitrary function i can use in by expressing this uh, uh, arbitrary uh, function in terms of this eigen functions of the hermitian operator so therefore i am dealing with in quantum mechanical system i am dealing with some n dimensional space what are these n dimensions they are simply the n number of eigen functions that i have i can al already get so when i say n dimensional space in quantum mechanical system i do not necessarily mean either cartesian or spherical polar or any other coordinate system what i mean is that the solution of the problem has n number of eigen functions so that the state of the system can be expressed as a linear combination of this n number of eigen functions so therefore the state of the system like in the cartesian coordinate the the position of the particle and similarly in the quantum mechanical uh, language the state of the system is described by this n number of eigen functions so therefore we require the definition for n dimensional space so to continue our discussion in the same way 
we in quantum mechanical uh, systems we define since we have 1, 2, 3, so on, so forth, n number of uh, states. So, we define state i and we call them as the ket vectors or simply the kets. We call this ket which are similar to this unit vector in the coordinate system. Using this i, so here i goes from 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, up to n, I can define now the state of any quantum mechanical system, any arbitrary uh, uh, state of the system. Uh, suppose I define this a and now I define this state instead of as a vector, I am calling it as a ket and I define this ket function as a linear combination of this ket vectors i multiplied by this a i's which are simply the amplitudes along along the that particular dimension. So, now what I have defined is this is known as the ket. Now, this ket for function can also be expressed in in a uh, in terms of a matrix. For example, I can define a matrix A whose this matrix uh, is essentially a column vector whose elements are simply a 1, a 2 and uh, up till a n. So, you see when I have when I define this a as a as a column vector where each element becomes a 1, a 2, a n this is similar to what I am expressing as a linear combination of this uh, ket vectors i's. So, this simply says a 1 is the amplitude along uh, one uh, first dimension and so on and so forth. Now, when I have defined this matrix A, similarly I can define the adjoint of this matrix since this is a col column vector. So, I can define this adjoint of this column vector which will actually be a row vector which whose elements will be A 1 star that is the complex conjugate of A 1, A 2 star, A 3 star and so on until a n star. So, now I have this column vector a which is given as the ket and correspondingly I have defined an adjoint of this column vector which is now a row vector with a 1 star till a n star as uh, the elements in this. Now, this adjoint of a I define so I have called this a as ket I define this as a bra function and I note it like this where a this is the bra function please note the sign. So, you have a vertical line in the left the angle in the right and here angle in the left and the vertical line in the uh, left and we have this uh, we are defining this as the bra and how can we express this we can express this simply as So, this bra function is expressed again in terms of the ket vectors i, but they, they are written in as, as their corresponding bra and a i star which is actually the complex conjugate of a i. So, now what I have is that I have a bra function, I have a ket. So, this together we see uh, this is what Dirac uh, proposed. So, bra and ket together we call this bracket this also uh, would remember uh, uh, resemble your regular bracket with a c missing. S now, we would see what we get when we actually. Uh, so, th this is how we defined our uh, bra function bra and ket. Let us say we try to get a product of a scalar product of a bra and a ket. So, I have a bra here, I have a ket here, I am trying to get a scalar product of them. So, I can equivalently write instead of these two lines uh, separately, I can write uh, in this notation. When I do this, you see this the, the bra side would be a row vector with complex conjugate quantity. 
and the ket is a column vector. Now it is b1, b2, b n. So, in the previous slide I defined the ket vector in terms of a. Now, I am defining this ket vector b whose elements are b1, b2, b n, but it is still a column uh, vector. Now, what I see is that I can multiply this when I multiply take this uh, scalar product of this uh, two or two matrices I, I would get as a 1 star b 1 plus a 2 star b 2 and so on and so forth until a n star b n. In other words, I can simplify this as writing from i equals 1 to n a i star b i. So, this is what I up should obtain when I take a scalar product of a bra and a ket. Now, alternatively since I have already defined what is how uh, what are my uh, the bra functions and the ket functions. So, let us express them in terms of uh, the uh, ket uh, vectors i. So, this first I am dealing with the bra side. So, when I do this I have i goes from 1 to n So, this is my bra of a which is a i star multiplied this bra function of corresponding to i. Now, I am interested I will write down for the ket of uh, b. So, when I write ket of b just to keep the notation uh, uh, general I introduce another uh, uh, index j and I define my ket function b as a j into b j. So, now you see what I have got is that I have sum over i j a i star i j b j. So, now what I have done is that this bracket the, the scalar product of two, two uh, functions a and b I am now expressing in terms of the scalar product of the unit vectors or the, uh, the unit vectors in that space. So, I have this i j and now look at the first line and the second line are essentially equal. So, when I look at the result from the first line this one and compare over here, what do I see? So, I would see for, for general value of in this case I am seeing that I will have a summation for a i star b i, but here I have a i star and b j. So, here I would have only n number of uh, uh, terms, but if I here for all general values of i and j I will have greater number of terms in this summation. So, what is the difference here? The difference is here is that my this i j must vanish for every value where i is not equal to j and i j this one should be equal to 1 for every uh, for whenever i equals j. So, what the condition that I require to make this term and this term equal is that i j should be 1 when i equals j and should be 0 when i is not equal to j. And we know this when uh, how to express this, this is simply we write as delta i j. So, the Kronecker delta function, so where i equals j this will become 1 otherwise it is 0. So, now what we see if we consider this i j overlap as Kronecker delta, then I see this would become i star b i delta i j. So, now what I am telling is uh, what I obtain is that that these unit vectors i s are actually orthonormal. So, this we have already seen, but we are now redefining them in this vector uh, uh, in this bracket notation. Do you remember how we defined our orthonormal functions? Suppose we had psi i and psi j we wanted to check whether they are orthonormal or not this is how we would write. So, now this psi i star psi j has been can be replaced as psi i psi j. or alternatively simply i j. Now, you see that we have defined this overlap integrals in terms of bra ket. So, we have bra, we have ket together we call them 
the bracket. Okay. So, now we will uh, discuss one more interesting uh, property from here. Suppose, when instead of overlap of A B, let us say I am doing this overlap of A A. What would I get? I would simply replace B i as A i because both bra and ket have A. So, in this case i goes from 1 to n A i star A i which is Now, you see what are A i abs, abs, A i uh, mod square. So, they are always going to be uh, real quantities because I am multiplying A i with A i A i A i star. So, this is again something that we are very familiar with. So, we are rewriting the quantum mechanical postulate in terms of the bracket notation. The important thing that is still uh, missing from our uh, discussion is that what are these A i's? Because we see that if we have this, we have defined our i j as the unit vector, uh, as the unit vectors and corresponding to i function i ket, I have the amplitude as A 1. So, now let us find out how can I get A 1, A 2 and, and so on. So, to do this, we will do a little exercise. Suppose, so we have defined our we have defined our vector ket as this one over here. Now, let us multiply a bra function j on both left hand, left hand side and right hand side. When I do this, in the right hand side, uh, sorry, this is a i. So, I have a, a ket is defined as the uh, linear combination of this th these terms and so I am multiplying uh, j in the bra from the left hand side and, and both from I am multiplying this from the left hand side both in the left hand side and the right hand side of terms. So, I have this term over here, but now I see that j i are orthonormal functions. So, when they are orthonormal functions, so I have a summation over here, but I see in this summation only one term will survive and that term will be when i equals j. All other terms will become 0. So, therefore, I am left with one term where i equals j and that is when i is equal to j. So, that this term delta i j becomes 1. So, I am left with a j. So, now what do I see? A j the coefficient is actually the overlap of j function with the state of the system. This is also something we had known how to get the uh, amplitude of in the in a linear series uh, expansion. So, again we are expressing this in terms of the bracket notation. We would do the same thing, but now we will define so, instead of writing the ket, we will now define the, the bra. So, this is how we had defined bra. Now, instead of multiplying j in the left hand side, we will multiply j from the right hand side on both left and right side. So, when I do this, you would see defined as the bra part of the i. So, when I multiply j from left hand side, Again, I have a summation over many terms, but only one term will survive that is when i equals j and that will be a j star. So, I see this expression j of a gives me a j and a and j in this way writing I gives me com the complex conjugate of it. So, this would suggest that a j is essentially. So, when I am writing something in the bra and in the ket, if I exchange them, then I have this complex conjugate. So, in other words to so this is my m n 
and I want to write as n m star. So, what we would do is that I essentially have uh, psi m sorry psi n star psi m. So, now this is the integral way of writing and this is the bracket notation of writing. We would look for one more important property that would uh, that comes out from this uh, discussion is that let us again write the ket now what i have here in this ket definition i have this ai term i now know how do i get this amplitude ai the answer to that is that i must overlap the ith function to the total ket. So, instead of a i, I am writing now because I know a i. So, because we, we saw that a j equals overlap of j function with the ket. So, similarly, I am writing a i with a, but now when I look at the left look at the left hand side and right hand side, I see something very interesting is that from this two I can write that this term is equal to 1. Now, this way, so this is another way of writing 1. What does this tell me? This is possible or this tells me that this i's form a complete set. So, this is the outcome of the fact that i's form a complete set. Now, what we are seeing is that this eigen functions the, the given by this uh, ket functions i's of a Hermitian operator because we are dealing with let us say uh, some, uh, some operators which are, which are Hermitian. In this case, we see that they form a complete set. They are eigen, the eigen functions they are orthonormal, they are individually normalized as well as orthogonal. So, again we are deriving the properties of the uh, quantum mechanical uh, Hermitian operators in terms of this bracket notation. So, to since we uh, obtained quite a few uh, information, so to summarize, so this is what we have obtained. We went from basis vector notation to ket vector basis vector we dis define in in a, in a uh, Cartesian sense and then we came to the ket vector whose dimension is which is now n dimensional. So, the ket uh, vector a is is defined in terms of this unit vectors i or the multiplied by a i's. So, the correspondingly the bra func functions are given as in this relation we also obtained that they are orthonormal the how the overlap uh, a j equals j a star and then we also saw that they are they form a complete set. Now, in our discussion so far what we have missed is or what we have not considered yet is actually the uh, operator. So, so far we have discussed the functions the Eigen functions. Now, what we would do is that we would introduce the operators to, to our discussion. So, these are the, the important uh, rules that we derived uh, in the previous part of our discussion and now we will introduce this operator into this bracket notation. Let us see how we do this. Again, we will start our discussion from the Cartesian space that we are very familiar with. Suppose, I have a vector a and I do some operation. So, I, I defined this vector as sum of E i's A i, where E i's are actually the um, basis vectors or the unit vectors uh, along different dimension. So, now this is my vector A. I apply an operator, operator A onto this vector and this would simply take me and give me another vector. So, A goes to, to B when I apply operator A on, a, uh, on, on this vector. Now, if I see the action of operator A on this vector A, I would see that I would simply have to act, act A on this uh, right hand side of the term. 
So, when I look here, I see that the action is essentially gives me this. What does it tell? So, these a i s are the coefficients that I, I know already how to obtain. Now, action of an operator a on this on this vector gives me this term. What is this term? This is action of operator a not on the vector a rather one of these unit vectors e i s, but this is nonetheless is operation is operation of an operator on a unit vector. So, this would again give me another vector. So, this is a vector. So, let us first see how can we express this new vector a e i. So, this is is a vector. Now, this is a vector in the same Cartesian space. Now, I know that these e i s form a complete set. What does that mean? That means, any arbitrary vector can be expressed in terms of this unit vector. So, therefore, I have this new unit vector which is an arbitrary vector from for my purpose now I want to express it in terms of the unit vectors. So, I do this by taking a sum e j where e j s are the unit vectors and I give some value a and call them as a j i. So, now I have defined my op action of operator a on onto this e i and I obtained this. So, for example, if I do it for E 1, what would I get? For So, this is for all values of j since we are talking about the Cartesian space. So, let us say we have j equals 1 to 3. So, you have E j a j 1. Similarly, action of a on E 2 would give me e j is the unit vector a j 2 and so on so forth. So, let us look at what happens here a of e 1. When I see here the new vector when operator a acts on this unit vector a, a e 1, I see e j, unit vector e j and then some coefficients. How many are there? So, for there are 3 in this case. So, for example, when a acts on e 1, I need this a j 1 that means, j is 1. So, 1 1 a j j as 2 2 1 a 3 1. So, these 3 elements form a column vector that will express the action of operator a on this unit vector. Similarly, the action of operator a on the second unit unit vector would give me a j 2's. So, a 1 2 a 2 2 a 3 2. So, this gives me another unit vector which, which comes from the action of a on e 2. Similarly, action of a on e 3 will give me. Now, when I see that together I have this a j i s which is a 3, three by 3 uh, um, matrix where the matrix elements essentially express the action of this operator on a vector a. So, what we have done is that, that in this new notation, we can redefine our operator a in terms of some matrix elements a j i s. So, in today's lecture, we discussed the useful bracket notation. We said that how we can define the state function in terms of this uh, ket functions and we also started discussing about how we can express operator in terms of this bracket notation. We will continue our discussion in the next lecture. Thank you for your attention.